Do you know what? One of the things I love about being in 2024 is that if I want my network to have a huge amount of bandwidth, then indeed I want my network switch to give me a huge amount of bandwidth. I don't need to buy something like this anymore. This big, chunky, noisy Netgear switch that costs about a grand. I can go ahead if I wish and get one of these. This is the Sedola 6 port network switch with four 2.5 GBE ports and two 10 GB ports and this thing knocking around for just 65 nicker is absolutely mind-blowing and in today's video we're going to review it we're going to figure out if this is too good to be true if this can actually do half the things it says it can do and ultimately even if it can't which frankly in a couple of things it can't do is that still okay to compromise on on 65 nicker I hate seagulls let's crack on with the review That is right, this tiny little box measuring 9 centimetres by 14 centimetres by less than 3 centimetres has got the potential for an internal switching capacity of up to 60 gigabits per second apparently. The 65 quid price tag on this, what do you get for that money? Well you get the switch itself, you get an external PSU, you get yourself a box and you get yourself some terrible instructions. That is your lot. So again for 65 nickel we're not going to be too hard on the presentation for something like this but i will say the build quality is surprisingly nice there with no fans inside this system was completely silent during our initial testing of this device also as mentioned we've got those four 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports again they do support auto negotiation we did connect both 1 gbe and 2.5 gb devices to this during our testing and the led lights did respond accordingly with the green and ambers there also with the sfp ports there this isn't a combo situation this isn't a case where you can only utilize one or the other you can go ahead if you choose and use a couple of sfp uh, fiber based connectors there and for those that aren't aware when it comes to fiber you either have to go for your big long uh, pre-existing fiber with different transceivers on the end or you can go ahead and get what's known as dac cables like this one that have got the transceiver was already connected and pop them inside it doesn't stop there of course because there are going to be those of you watching this that are going well you know 65 nicker sounds good but I don't use fiber I use copper like a normal person and I get you you've probably run an RJ45 setup and your 10 GBE connections are 10 G base T and for that I'm pleased to say that you can still these days get hold of 10 GBE copper to fiber adapters knocking around and again Sedola themselves have them but you don't have to buy theirs you can pick these up these days for about 25 to 30 nicker and these allow you to install inside a fiber connected device and have yourself an RJ45 copper output there meaning that if you wish you can go ahead slot this inside and boom you've now got yourself a copper base switch and you can go ahead with a couple of those although Sedola do highlight that if you use two of these something I did later in the videos things get hot now in terms of power consumption i will say on this device power consumption on it, it there is a matter for debate there when i only had a single 2.5 gpe network connected nas inside this device power consumption went down as low as 1.7 to 1.9 watts in active use but i will say that when i fully populated this device more on that later on with a combination of 2.5 and 1 gigabit ethernet connected nas devices and connecting a 10 gpe nas and connecting a 10 gpe e sonic silo thunderbolt adapter full population full saturation i will say the power consumption did go up but it didn't go nuts it only went to about 10.1 to 10.2 watts which in terms of a switch is high but in terms of two 10 gbe ports and four 2.5 gig that's actually pretty darn respectable and again, all the while with this metal enclosure having no fan, meaning pure silence. Taking advantage of passive ventilation all the way around. Much like Sodolo said, when I did have the transceiver inside, things got hot. So much so that once I powered this down, I couldn't even touch this for a good few minutes, let alone trying to get the thing out. So on top of that, you've also got the little screws at the base there for wall mounting this. Apparently, they're not great when you look at the Amazon reviews. People have complained about the angle of these. Um, I don't 
think it's terrible, but I do think, you know, those that need this water pool, if they found an issue with it and they've taken the time to review it online, I didn't do it, but I'm willing to bet that it is something of a bummer. Um, apart from that, you've got that DC jack there on the rear. You could run this incredibly efficiently. efficiently. You could probably pop this and use a USB adapter on this as well very, very easily, something I'd probably recommend there. And overall, I've got to say the build quality does leave me impressed. Now you mentioned that large amount of switching capacity there in the back end, because remember, just because this has got those ports, there's actually going to be more to the overall bandwidth potential than just the four times 2.5G or 10G, um, if you like them more on that in a bit, or if you went ahead with those two 10Gs and tried to do something with that, that still combines to 30 gigabits, but you've still got to manage things internally, whether it is you're going to be utilizing VLANs, whether it is you're going to be utilizing mirroring or lagging them together. On that subject of lag, I'm pleased to say that you can combine individual 2.5G ports there. So you can give yourself 5G there. And given that the majority of prosumer now solutions from um, QNAP, TerraMaster, Acer Store, not Synology, um, arrive with 2.5 GB on multiple ports these days. It's a small investment to get yourself a 5G connected network switch. Now, I had the devices mentioned earlier on connected to multiple systems. I had the device connected to uh, one NAS via link aggregation and two other NASs individually on 2.5 G and 1 G respectively. And I also had uh, a Synology there, the DS923 uh, Plus, connected with a 10 GB adapter directly into this. And I had the final option port there connected to a 10g windows pc and obviously when i'm trying to measure the switch capacity in that setup i can't exceed 10g because the only device i'm going into is that 10g port so everything i was doing pushing as much performance uh, via 10gbe thanks to aja on the system via the network i couldn't exceed 10g easily but that said with aja testing over smb uh, mapped drives across all of those different nas systems it did still hold up very very well and of course with the nas that i was utilizing on 10g being hard drive based it was never going to be able to fully saturate the 10g connection anyway overall when i had this running non-stop for half an hour I saw no problems, I saw no shortfall. Yes, the temperatures went up, part of that to do with me utilizing two of these adapters on the rear, but the temps were high, but it did still hold up. I didn't see any issues there. But I'm not gonna lie to you, the software with this is pretty bland. If I had to say where the saving is on this, I'm gonna say it to that software. The UI or the UX or whatever you want to call the software, the user experience from the design via the browser, it looks dated as all hell. There was no company logos, presumably because you end up with a hardware like this with rebranding from different companies anyway. It was literally just the word switch in the corner. No real logos there. There was model IDs and stuff like that, but that was your lot. You had things like a quality of service and port priority queuing. You had loop detection. You had VLAN creation there. You could adapt the jumbo frames up to 16K. On top of that, you had port mirroring. You had a spanning tree protocol. You had bandwidth control there and of course link aggregation as mentioned earlier on but my god it was basic even on the amazon pages themselves when you look at the marketing materials that sadolo have put out on this device they have made no bones even they describe it as basic for 65 nicker at least it's a managed switch when you would think the majority of established, you know, globally known network switch brands, if they were rocking out four 2.5 gig ports and two 10G ports at this price tag, you better believe it would have been unmanaged. So I'm kind of surprised that this brand have managed to make this and still give you at least a modicum of that managed software. I'm not going to say it's great because it damn well is isn't there but i will say for the price tag it is leaps and bounds ahead of what i expected it to arrive with it's incredibly hard to critique something like this on the subject of value and on the subject of build quality i actually think it's pretty darn good i can't really speak for the warranty and the support i will say if i was going to buy personally a 65 quid switch of this caliber on your amazons your aliexpress your whatever and something went wrong after six months I don't really think I'm going to get much in the way of a warranty on something like this. And I don't think you should. I don't think it's right that, you know, a lot of Chinese brands can turn around and go, no, no, you're all right. Not all of them, just some of them. But I will say, looking at the reviews, I'm not going to be wholly confident that if this thing died on its ass in six to eight months, that I think I would get a warranty replacement. But then a 65 nicker with those margins of error and those margins of profit being as skinny as they are, you know, we've got to be realistic as well. Ultimately, 
Do I like it? Yes. Am I going to keep using it? I think I will. I think I am going to deploy this very switch here in the studio in our test area because I think it did a very good job of managing some quite heavy loads in its time there. But apart from that, I'm not going to call this a high in quality. And is it going to be a suitable alternative to a business that was looking at a Netgear Chen Gig switch like the one I threw over my shoulder? Is absolutely not then this is for the hobbyist the home labber and for those of you that understand that 65 nicker isn't just a price tag to be appealing it's a price tag out of necessity thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this there's a link in the description to this uh, we've got a follow-up on this very switch and another one coming very very soon from a different brand so do stay tuned for that but apart from that thank you so much for watching hopefully there's a written review link below too and if you need any more for uh, systems the comment section the free advice section the discord the forum or head over to Ko-Fi and Patreon for a consultation with us. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.